welcome to ResoCoder! In the previous part, we learned the basics of object-oriented programming. By now, you should have some idea of what a class is and how to create it. In this tutorial, we will go further. Inheritance. When you look into a dictionary, the verb inherit means to derive a quality from parents or ancestors. You know, your mom was tall, your dad was tall, and you are likely to be tall too. This is exactly what inheritance does even in programming. It's nothing scary, just instead of a child who inherits the traits of its parents, you have a subclass which inherits members from its base class. In the previous tutorial, which you should definitely check out, we made a class called Person. This is really generic though. There are many types of people, the most awesome of which are obviously programmers and YouTubers. So, as you might have guessed, in this tutorial we are gonna create the first one, Programmer. However, before we do that, let's also add a method called talk into our class person. We will add it just below this constructor. It's going to be public, void, talk. It's not gonna accept any arguments. And here we just wanna write out something to the console. So, console.writeline, I am a person, nice to meet you. Cool stuff. This method is public because we want to be able to call it from other classes as well. And while we are at it, let's also add a private boolean field has underwear. We are gonna add it just below these three fields and it's gonna be private bool has underwear. This is private because frankly our persons here are shy and they don't want any other class to know whether they are wearing underwear or not. Right now, we have a bit of a problem. We aren't able to set the value of the field has underwear on a person object because it's private. So for example, in the previous episode we have created a person called John. And when I want to set has underwear on the object John, so John dot has underwear, there is nothing like has underwear on this object. That's because the field is private. However, we can utilize a public constructor. Because it's public, we can call it from anywhere we like, and because it's a part of the class, we can set even private fields in it. We have already created one in the previous tutorial, so let's just add one more parameter to it. The constructor is here, and we are just gonna add bool has underwear. And we want to set the private field has underwear with capital H to be equal to the variable with non capital H. And we have an error. In the main method, we are instantiating a person object, but since we've added one parameter to the constructor, the constructor call with three arguments is no longer valid. As you can see here, we could add an argument for our newly created has underwear, but we don't want to supply it each and every time since most of the people out there are hopefully wearing underwear by default. We need to have two constructors and they are gonna be overloaded just like we can overload methods. So below the first constructor we are gonna create another public person constructor and this one is only gonna accept height, weight and hair color. And we could just copy and paste the contents of the other constructor and just change it up a bit, like this. And now we just want to change has underwear to be true by default. But this is not what we want to do, because if we added more fields, we would have two separate constructors to take care of. What we want to do is to use this keyword, which calls another constructor inside this class. So we can get rid of the contents of this new constructor. And over here we are gonna add a colon, now this, parentheses, and we are gonna supply height, weight, hair color and has underwear. And by doing this we are gonna call this constructor which has all of the parameters. So height, weight, hair color and for has underwear we are gonna specify true. And just to clear this up a bit we are gonna put this below, like this. Alright, now we can instantiate person class even without explicitly specifying whether or not the person wears underwear. Nice! Now let's create a class called programmer which will derive from person. So we wanna write class programmer, now colon and person. And right now we have an error. Person does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. 
That's because a constructor of a subclass needs to call a constructor of the base class. And since the class programmer has no specified constructors yet, it's using the default parameterless one. However, when it then tries to call a parameterless constructor on the base class to do all of the setup, it finds out that it's not present over there, because the class person has no parameterless constructor. To fix this, we need to create a constructor for programmer. Because programmers are a strange bunch of people, we will need to explicitly specify if a programmer is wearing unaware or not each time that we create an instance of it. This means that we don't need two separate constructors as in the person class. So we are just gonna add public, programmer, and we can copy all of the parameters from the person's constructor which has all of the four parameters, and we are gonna paste them in here and we are almost set. A constructor in a subclass needs to call one located in the base class, so we need to add this call over here. Similarly, when we were using this keyword in this constructor right here, we are gonna do the same thing, but instead of this keyword, we are gonna say base. So colon, base, and we wanna supply height, weight, hair color, and has underwear. Let's also add a field specific to programmers. Favorite programming language. So public string, favorite programming language. And let's also set this field up in our constructor. So we need to add one more parameter, string favorite programming language, or favlang for short. And we are gonna set favorite programming language to be equal to favlang. And now let's test out if our programmers can talk. So let's go down here, we can get rid of this John person, and we are gonna create a programmer, Jeff, and he is gonna be equal to new programmer, and I'm just gonna make up the values. He is not gonna be wearing underwear, and the favorite language is obviously C sharp. And now we can do something like Jeff.talk, and when we run the program, Jeff is gonna say, I am a person, nice to meet you. But we want programmers to talk about something else, like for example, what's their favorite programming language and whether or not they are wearing underwear. For this, we need to add a method called talk even to our programmer class. So public void talk, and do you see that squiggly green line? It says that this method hides an inherited member. And sure enough, our base class from which we inherit contains a method called talk to. There are two ways we can handle this. We can either supply a new keyword or we can make this method override the one in the base class. We are gonna do it by overriding, at least in this tutorial, because that's what you would want to do most of the time. We are gonna leave the differences between these two approaches for future tutorials where we will be dealing with something called polymorphism. So subscribe if you don't wanna miss it. So basically the first way to handle this is to just add a new keyword and now we are all set, but what we want to do is add an override keyword and for this to work we need to mark the method inside the base class person as virtual. So this is gonna be virtual and now we are able to override this method in the subclasses. In here we want a console.write line, and we could just concatenate the favorite programming language and has underwear fields, but we are gonna do it differently, we are gonna use interpolated strings. So we just wanna add a dollar sign, quotation marks, and we are gonna write I like, now we wanna insert the favorite programming language, so we wanna write two curly braces, and inside them favorite programming language and I have underwear is equal to has underwear. And we have yet another error. This time it says that the field has underwear is inaccessible due to its protection level. The field is located inside the person class which is the base class and it's also marked as private. As you may remember, private members can be accessed only from within the class in which they are declared. Now we have a problem. Every person needs to keep track of their underwear, but only programmers want to talk about it aloud. Because of this, we cannot make the field has underwear public, as that would allow anyone to check if a person is wearing an underwear. And keep in mind that our people are shy. Well, except for programmers. 
what we need to do is to allow programmers to check if they are wearing underwear themselves, but not let any other class which is not a subclass of person to be able to check it. This is what the access modifier protected is for. It acts as if the member was private with one exception. The subclasses have access to that member as well. So we are gonna go to the class person and change the private has underwear field to be protected. And now when we take a look what the programmer Jeff is gonna tell us inside this main method, we are gonna see that he likes C sharp and he has underwear is equal to false. Shame on you Jeff. And also if we want our programmers to tell us that they are persons and they are happy to meet us, we can add one more statement to the talk method of the programmers. We are gonna say base dot talk, which is gonna call the talk method on the person class. And now when we run this program, Jeff is gonna say, I am a person, nice to meet you. And then he will say that he likes C sharp and he's not wearing underwear. All right, this video must have been quite exhausting, but after you spend some time tinkering with inheritance, you're gonna get it for sure. If you wanna learn even more by answering a few questions from this video and doing a bunch of coding assignments, go to the link in the description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you and you learned something new, give it a like and please also share it. Subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss my new videos and also hit the bell button because YouTube is pulling off some tricks nowadays and it's not letting you know about new content from the channels you are subscribed to. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.